is exactly 10 p.m. in the studios of UBC TV. Hello there and welcome to News Tonight. This uh, first day of uh, February 2020. First of all, let's have a look at our top stories. In our news tonight, ex Obote Minister Peter Otai laid to rest. Victoria's 2019 UC Elevers party on. Elsewhere in the world, UK leaves the European Union. And in sports, Dipuru Parelia is new FMU president. Hello there and welcome once again on Sign Language. I'll be joined shortly by Elizabeth Nakakoni and I am Edward Rukidi Kijanangoma. President Yuri Kogutam Seveni has commended the people of Kabarole district in particular and Renzori subregion at large for embarking on income generation activities in order to banish poverty and create prosperity. The president was speaking at Renzori University in Fort Portal Municipality during the launch of the two-day Agri-led Expo 2020 under the Operation Wealth Creation led by General Salim Saleh. The event is running under the theme investment for local economic development and its major, it major, it, its major venture is to promote agro-industrialization for national development. Let's get more in this report. Transport and value addition are some of the major investment avenues in the Renzori region, which is comprised of eight districts. These are Kabarole, Chenjojo, Kasese, Bundibujo, Ntoroko, Kamwenge, Chegegwa, and Wunyangabu. Launching the Renzori Investment Expo at Mountains of the Moon University in Fort Porto Municipality, President Yori Museveni commended the people and the leaders of the region for taking the initial step in linking agriculture with industries. He revealed that the government of Uganda has got the target of social transformation and diversification of the economy with the state leading in provision of security and infrastructure. Leaders must be political doctors to, to come out a diagnosis of their societies. Now when the NRM carried out the diagnosis of Africa, we saw that the Africans are a great people. The problem of Africa has been Kulala in Swahili, Kulala Sana. We, we are lucky we have got everything here in Uganda. There is nothing that we cannot do if we wake up. So I want to say I'm very happy in Semerino of Ndosera Bantu Barunzuri. Secondly, social transformation. Thirdly, diversifying the base of the economy by having more legs for wealth. The two-day Agri-led Expo 2020 under Operation Wealth Creation, led by General Salim Saleh, was held under the theme Investment for Local Economic Development, and its major venture is to promote agro-industrialization for national development. During the occasion, the President also witnessed the signing of five memoranda of understanding that include one between Mountains of the Moon University and Belgium for the establishment of a five-star hotel that includes a hotel training institute within the campus. The others were between the Uganda Development Corporation, UDC, and Mango Tree, a Chinese company for establishing water transport on Lake Albert. UDC also signed others with Mabale Tea Factory, Mpanga Tea Factory, together with the East Africa Cocoa and Commodities Limited that is under the Bundibujo District Local Government. He commended General Saleh for the work done within Operation Wealth Creation Project as he pledged to support all the exhibitors with working capital. He assured the members present that Uganda is going to have an industrial revolution. He therefore commended the people of Toro for the increased banana production that has eased food needs in Kampala. Mr. Mseveni observed 
that wananchi can benefit more since banana fiber can be processed into paper. He also observed that Uganda would soon start making industrial grade sugar and starch, adding that the country currently spends 41 million US dollars per annum on the import of industrial grade sugar. The Vice Chancellor of Mountains of the Moon University, Professor John Kasenene, saluted the President for his input to transform his institution into a public university. He reported that the institution has 47 programs with an emphasis on science subjects. Prisla Namara reporting. Now the Prime Minister Dr. Hakan Gunda says Ugandans living in exile are free to return to their country. The Premier made the remarks during the burial of Peter Otai in Oderai village, Soroti district. Peter Otai, who was State Minister for Defense during Obote II government in the 1980s, has been in exile for about 40 years and died in the United Kingdom on January the 1st. Aguta Philip reports. The body of the former state minister for defense, Peter Otai, was laid to rest at about half past 4 p.m. in Oderai village, Soroti district. <laughs> Peter Otai was state minister for defense during Obote II government in 1980s. As a result, he was buried with a three-gun salute. But, uh, cock once. But, uh, we'll fire three rounds of live ammunition. But, uh, fire. But, uh, fire. But, uh, fire. He has been in exile for about 40 years and died in United Kingdom on January 1st. During the burial ceremony, the Prime Minister Dr. Kahana Rugunda says Peter Otai died at a time he was about to return in the country. The truth of the matter, and this point was explained by a number of speakers, including my friend Mr. Pedro. There is no single person who can now say that I'm in Uganda, but I cannot go back to my country because of my political views. He further says Ugandans living in exile are free to return to the country. That's why the Amnesty Commission and the chairmanship of Justice Onega was put in place in order to ensure that all Ugandans who want to come home can come home peacefully and where possible we settled in their country because government also pledged to complete a multi-billion house belonging to late Peter Otai which he started its construction in 1980s offered to renovate and complete Opposition politicians, the UPC president Jimmy Akena and FDC president Patrick Amuriat described Peter Tai as a humble but patriotic person. Because that election was challenged, Peter Tai defended the people's government effectively until the UPC government was overthrown in 1985. He was a kind person. And an inspiration to us young politicians. No wonder the president of the FDC was born out of such teaching. The prayers were led by Bishop Emeritus of Soroti Archdiocese, Charles Obakol, and encouraged the people of Teso on unity. It's the close relatives there who sell off the pieces of land around here. This kind of attitude sends away the educated from our communities. It makes the, the, the young elite Iteso not want to invest in their village.
Hundreds of mourners turned up, including the Minister for Disaster, Musa Echweru, State Minister for ICT, Peter Ogwang, former First Lady, Mama Miria Obote, NRM promoter, Mike Mukula, relatives and friends. For UBC TV News, I am Philip Aguta in Soroti. <laughs> Thanks, Aguta Philip, for that report. And indeed, no Ugandan should die in exile because the political situation in the country is conducive. Now, the Chief of Defense Forces, General David Muhozi, has commissioned the newly completed building for non commissioned officers at Single Training Center. The commissioning comes at a time when the Uganda People's Defense Forces are celebrating 39 years as a military force of repute. Single Peace Support Operation Training Center has received nine new blocks, including a senior officer's mess, a store, and a communication center. The Chief of Defense Forces, General David Mohosi, commissioned the facilities. He thanked those that made it a success singling out Joint Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Joseph Musanyufu and his staff who initiated the project. I'm very so happy to commission these works and to know that as we make 39 years, our kitchen of peace support operations is now becoming modern with a better environment and better facilities. I want to implore you to keep them in good shape. Lieutenant General Musanyufu hails the project he calls a milestone in improving the forces operation. This project is one of the projects of direct labor, where engineers could get using our own labor and we do the construction without having to have contractors. Achieving this is, is a testimony that we can do it and we shall continue to do it this way. Wherever this has been done, we, we see achievements being realized. Various high-ranking UPDF officers, including Major General Ambrose Musinguzi and Brigadier Mohanguzi, among others, attended the function. John Burns, Sentamo, reporting. Meanwhile, Uganda People's Defense Forces has launched a one-week civil military activities in Luero Triangle that will have a number of schools and hospitals renovated. Among the beneficiaries is Kagoya Health Center 3, which has been roofed and renovated by the UPDF Engineering Brigade. Uganda People's Defense Forces has begun a renovating and roofing schools and health centers in Nakasongola district as part of the 39th Tarehe Sita celebrations. The exercise is in schools and health centers of Kakoge, Buyambi and Moronzi in Budiebo sub-county, among others. We are renovating and completing one classroom block at Buyambi Primary School. We are also renovating and completing one classroom block at Molonzi Primary School, both in Ibudiebo constituency. We are also renovating the main outpatient department block at Kakoge Health Center 3 in Nakasongola constituency. Kakoge Health Center 3 Medical Officer Samuel Lugobe thanked the force for its timely gesture. In Kakoge Health Center 3, as I've told you, it is a health center 3 level, which does uh, see people on a daily basis, which we call OPD, and on average we receive 80 patients per day. We also do uh, deliveries where on average we deliver 50 mothers per day and other activities like HIV care uh, together with immunization which we do on a daily basis. He requests UPDF to empower the facility further to enable it manage the high numbers especially of accidents that happen along Gulu Road. Uh, we are very happy to have this uh, facility being renovated because first of all it is on a highway where we receive uh, several cases, uh, among these cases we receive 
accident cases and we have been constrained with the space um, but now that it is being renovated we shall be having enough space where we shall be uh, having our patients be worked on. Another good thing we've uh, benefited from this uh, uh, activity is that uh, our lab has been very bad. Uh, we've been having quality, uh, poor quality, uh, poor, uh, poor lab samples in this lab. But now that it has been renovated, uh, we, we are expecting quality uh, 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 lab service. The Uganda People's Defense Forces Engineering Brigade is also renovating Buyambi and Molozi Primary School in Budiebo constituency. The team of engineers has already commenced constructing and renovating of two blocks at Buyambi Primary School, which is a UPE school with a population of over 200 people. The UPDF says the annual and rotational civil military activities are aimed at strengthening the strategic relationship between the communities and the force. Because there, the UPDF are continuing with its uh, role in as far as empowering the community is concerned. And those are some of the activities that have been lined up as we count down to Tarehe Sita for this year. Now, police is holding two people over attempted human trafficking. Resti Nachiwonde, together with her driver, Muloni Aramanzani, were allegedly transporting the victims to Dubai, as we hear in this report. <laughs> A police uh, working of course with the anti-corruption unit uh, received information of uh, a person who was uh, allegedly uh, uh, in the act or in the process of trafficking uh, in persons. Uh, of course after receiving this information we were able to intercept the vehicle that was carrying these ladies at Entebbe Airport and uh, were able to arrest Moloni Aramanzani who was uh, the driver and uh, upon interrogation he was of course able to inform us that he is a worker of uh, one who rested Nachi, Nachi Wedde. Anyone wants to get involved into labor externalization there is due process uh, of which you're supposed to get a license from uh, the Ministry of Labor and Social Development and she didn't have this certificate. So which means anyone engaging in this business of externalizing labor is actually doing it illegally and in a way trafficking these people because you're taking them to do work and the government does not know about it because at the end of the day she will not be audited. So uh, she's with us uh, on charges of uh, trafficking in persons of course uh, we shall keep on investigating further. We hope that in three days <coughs> uh, this file will be submitted to the RSA uh, for perusal and advice, even sanctioning if possible. If our efforts are not futile and whoever is out there and is currently engaging in this kind of business should know that we are on high alert and we shall not uh, uh, stop focusing more on this issue of labor externalization in an illegal way. Victims, four in number, are also here with us. We are trying to record their statements, establish where they were destined, but we all, what we know is that they were en route to a uh, flight with Emirates at Entebbe Airport, which would later on take them to a uh, to Dubai. The result is, as you all know, that we have always come out to recover this money. If, they need, if there is need of a recovery, we shall recover the money and uh, give it to them. But this does not remove the charge uh, of uh, trafficking in persons. Look, Hawaii Sijire there, of course, clarifying on uh, those uh, four that have been rescued from human traffickers. Now, Jija municipality residents were thrown into laughter following the arrest of one of their, one of their own carrying eight ready-to-eat goat meat. Juma Wampande, a resident of Mafubira Zone A, was arrested by police at around 1 a.m. with eight slaughtered goats as he was trying to sneak out of Bugembe Town Council to Jinja municipality. Take a look. 
Ealing is a rescue vice. Juma Wampande, a resident of Mafurura Zone A, Jinja Municipality, never knew that stealing was bad until he was nabbed carrying slaughtered goats. <laughs> This followed a police night crackdown against strong elements in Bugembe suburb, Chinja municipality. The OC Bugembe police station, where the meat haste suspect is being held, says Wampande was found with sacks of goat's meat headed to Jinja municipality. The town, Jinja town, they were two on a motorcycle. We ran after them, one broke off, and we arrested one. He's in our custody. We are, our investigation is uh, going on. He says he got those goods from Namutumba and he was taking them to Mukono. Namso Kaini appeals for public support to apprehend such wayward goons. However, Wampande Juma says he was only helping his friend to transport the meat to Jinja from Namutumba district. Kaziba Ramadan, the secretary of Mafurura Butchers Association, criticized the thieves for damaging the image of the butcher attendants. To Dakwe Sanga and Mbutufu, Abantu Balikuri and Yame Chafu, to Dakwe Sanga and Abantu Balikuri and Yame Endibe, to Dakwe Sanga and Abantu Balikuru Miriza Eri in Echiaduke for Kuba Neri Navy. Shaidat Nasaku, UBC News. Very sad indeed as people are stealing uh, goats in today's era. Now let's go to Kasese where police in Kasese is investigating a possible kidnap of a six weeks old baby boy after his mother lost him to a person she trusted. Kabugo Yoneki had given birth to Masireka Isaac six weeks back before he was taken by a one Ifungo angel in disguise of helping Kabugo who was loaded with domestic duties on Thursday last week. A woman in Kasese is in tears after a child thief allegedly vanished with her child. Kabugo Yoneki, the mother of Masereka Isaac, suspects Ithungu Angel for the haste. Kabugo alleges that Ithungu took off with Masereka after she had gone for a short call. After a few minutes without seeing the girl, she thought of looking for her at her place of residence only to find a closed door. Kabugo further reveals that she tried asking the neighbors the whereabouts of the child, but in vain. According to Waseka Gideon, Kabugo's husband, the incident happened when he was away. <laughs> Baguma Peter, one of the residents in the area, condemns the act. The, the Bible, which is not supposed to be done. And I urge to all ladies, all girls, that please who can have the heart of doing such a thing, please stop, stop thinking about it and stop doing it because it is not biblical. The chairperson of Kizungu cell, where the suspect and the victim reside, Wakiba Nahi Fanahasi, said the suspect was not registered in his book. He, however, appealed to parents to be more responsible of their children, especially infants. <laughs> Benzoi East Police spokesperson Tresige Vicent confirmed the registration of the case of abduction of the one and a half month kid from his mother, which they say happened at 7 p.m. on Thursday. Suspect between Angel, the suspect, and the inquiry is ongoing. We have got printouts and other things to locate this lady where she is. And we shall tell you when we succeed. Dokas Kimono, UBC TV News. It is coming to 26 minutes after 10 in the studios of UBC TV. We'll now take a very short break, but we'll return with much more. Stay with us.
Minister of Health informs the general public that there is a new deadly virus called coronavirus which broke out in China but has since spread to other countries worldwide. There are many people who travel between Uganda and China for trade, employment and tourism which puts the country at serious risk. The government reassures all Ugandans that so far there are no confirmed or suspected cases of coronavirus in Uganda. Coronavirus starts like a common flu but its symptoms and effects are more severe and if not managed early enough it can lead to death. The coronavirus signs and symptoms include fever, cough, sore throat, shortness of breath. The ministry urges the general public to be on the lookout to protect themselves and those around them from getting the coronavirus. To prevent coronavirus from spreading further, please take the following measures. Be on the lookout and avoid close contact with persons who show flu-like symptoms. Cover your mouth and nose when sneezing or coughing. Regularly wash hands with soap and running water. Cook meat and eggs thoroughly before eating. Avoid unprotected contact with live wild animals. For further information, please call the Ministry of Health toll-free number on 0800-1066 or send a free SMS to you report on 8500. These messages from the Ministry of Health with support from UNICEF and WHO. Mama Naro, sweet Rambi, where are you? Where is Ako Simo? I want you to get his Amo Sutu. Oh, you're going to go? The soup you want is for MTN. What are you doing? band, I can call any network. We have added more Kasupu to MTN Daily Voice Bundles. You can now call all networks using the same voice bundle at the same price. Dial star 160 star 21 hash to load an MTN Daily Voice Bundle and call any network. Everywhere you go, MTN. Welcome back from that short break and this is news tonight here on UBC TV. Elizabeth Nakakoni is on sign language and I am Edward Rukidi Kijinangoma. Now child welfare advocates from Eastern and Southern Africa have expressed concern over implementation of child welfare policies in the wake of impending political seasons. The concern comes at a time five countries from these regions come together to establish what becomes of children after they leave foster homes. Now this was raised during the closure of a three-day engagement organized by SOS Children's Villages. Here is our reporter, Henry Okrut. Police often reports cases of child neglect and abandonment statistics mostly gathered on a daily weekly and monthly basis throughout the year in 2018 for example the annual police crime report indicated a decrease in cases of child neglect with figures indicating 6757 cases reported this was from 10,021 cases in 2017, indicating a decrease by 3,264. Some of such children end up in the hands of caretakers and foster homes. I think it's a question of people responding to the situation in front of them. Unfortunately, in doing so, the children are left uh, uh, not just unattended, but f without the care that they, that they deserve and, and, and was intended for. This is the reason why child welfare activists from five Eastern and Southern African countries met in Entebbe, Uganda's international gateway to deliberate on what they underscored. That is Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Zambia and Malawi governments will be working closely with SOS and all other partners in the countries to come up with a tool that is going to track and monitor the children that have been reintegrated in the community. Why now and not sometime in the recent past or even in the near future? Information that we have is that a number of children have been reintegrated or are living in different forms of care and that information is not known. So for government to be able to come up with a strategy to implement and make a difference in lives of children, they must have the right information that they can use for those strategies. Unfortunately, some players are worried 
as to whether the adopted resolutions and recommendations will be adopted by the respective countries due to political reasons with the exception of malawi that held its general elections in 2019 the rest of the participating countries are set to hold theirs soon tanzania for example will hold elections this year 2020 uganda and zambia in 2021 and kenya in 2022 almost every country is going through elections but we are praying that we have peaceful elections because when there is political instability definitely also it becomes difficult for us to implement or deliver services whereas the child welfare advocates are concerned that policy implementation may be minimal fred ingavirano the commissioner children affairs allays such fears if you don't ever explain the purpose of a project and how it is going to benefit individuals at the level of children families communities local governments and the national at large then you are getting it wrong people will misunderstand it why is it coming at this time of electioneering but if the message is very clear from the policy level by the responsible ministry which is now our ministry of uh, gender labor and social development i don't think the community members will take it to be a political kind of maneuver the program brings together five eastern and southern african countries with the aim of increasing broad use of data on alternative care and target groups henry okorut ubc now scholars who completed their graduate studies from uk universities through chevening scholarships have been recognized by the deputy british high commissioner to uganda sarah mann they have been awarded certificates and urged to contribute to their communities through the skills they have acquired from the uk Alpha Ogwang is a 37-year-old lady from Kole District who has just completed a master's degree in laws, international human rights and terrorism, courtesy of Chevening Scholarships United Kingdom. Chevening is a very prestigious scholarship, so I aspired to be one of those who would be selected to study in the UK and I graduated with a merit. Alpha Gwang's triumph was recognized by the Deputy British High Commissioner to Uganda, Sarah Mann, along with other alumni from Albertine University, UK. Alpha Gwang could not hide her joy. I was overjoyed when I made the long list. Here in the UK, is you go and it's just too short a period of time, one year, but yet it's long enough to change you in certain ways. The learning scholarship really did a lot. Uh, there is what he did in class and what he did for me socially and what he did for me in attitude change. The British High Commissioner to Uganda, Saraman, urged the Chevniers to be positive now that they have acquired lifelong skills. She asked them to contribute to their community's well-being. You found the degrees that you studied and the universities that you studied in to be um, helpful for your careers, to teach you the things that you were hoping they would teach you, um, to be the kinds of places that expanded your minds and horizons, to make a contribution to Uganda, to your society here. The Chivneers were advised to be focused and willing to change their people's livelihoods by applying skills acquired from the UK. Look for your niche, the thing that you can do. I'm personally in business. I believe I can build businesses. Walking your journey, so walk it your way. People will find you along that road, or might not, but be true to yourself, because then and only then will you be able to settle right back in and enjoy yourself. The event was held at the British High Commissioner's residency in Kampala. Shaidat Nasaku, UBC News. Now back to the education sector where the poor performance in science subjects in the just released 2019 results has raised concern among experts, uh, school head teachers and parents. Now experts say that such results affect government's efforts geared at promoting science subjects. The performance of female students at Mackay Memorial uh, College, however, is promising with girls performing well in chemistry and physics. The just released 2019 Uganda Certificate for Education results indicates an improved performance mainly among female students. English subjects, chemistry and physics were however seemingly not well done in comparison to the art-based subjects. 
The biggest problems in chemistry is that the candidates do not know the steps of balancing equations. This is a very important skill in chemistry. However, female students at some schools like Makai Memorial College in Atete did not only perform well in science subjects, but had the female students perform better. We got 23 first grades, um, 76 in Division 2, uh, 84 in Division 3. Being a U.S. school, we feel this is fair performance. A majority of female students pass science subjects, mainly in chemistry and physics. Our sciences were performed better than the arts. For example, chemistry. We had 14 distinctions. That's great. Okay. And actually, chemistry was our best done subject. Makai Memorial College in Atiti is also one of the pioneer universal secondary schools in Rubaga Division. Dr. Francis Kayanja, the head teacher at Makai Memorial College, says the girls who've excelled in sciences were previously admitted with the low grades. He attributed the success to hard work and harmony among parents and school. The girl was getting some nines, but because of the potential she had, when we brought her in a good environment, she turned out to perform very well. Mm -hmm. She had aggregate 27, which is a first grade. Then we have another case. You can call this girl, although I didn't want to mention it, but I think this is the, the reality, who was a street kid, but who adopted her as a school. And she scored aggregate 21. At the nearby Light Academy Bling, at least 80% of students passed in grade one. The school administrators and students were in part mode by press time. Uh, I'm so happy and thankful to God for the good performance that we've uh, seen today. We had 62 students and only four for second grade. I got 88 and I'm very thankful to the Almighty for my success was because of my teachers, parents, fellow students. But I got 8 in 8, I got 9 in 8 and I got 9 in 8. I'm very happy. At least 330,500 candidates attempted the November 2019 senior foil neighbor exams and over 92% of them qualified for A level and other tertiary institutions. The exams were released by the First Lady Janet Museven at the office of the Prime Minister in Kampala this Friday. And of course, celebrations are still going on at schools and in different homes for those, of course, who made it uh, to Senior 5 next this year. Now, the Equal Opportunities Commission has embarked on a countrywide tour to different education institutions to monitor the status of inclusive education. Now, this itinerary aims at identifying schools with facilities that favor persons with disabilities. The move also targets ending school dropouts as a result of disability complications. Persons with disabilities have a reason to smile, following one of their own, excelling in the just released 2019 Uganda Certificate of Education examination results. Njamhashi Godwin, a student with hearing and sight impairment, beat all odds to emerge as the best in the 2019 UCE with 13 aggregate in the best eight subjects. After government's efforts, to promote inclusive education at all levels in Uganda. The project has continued to bear fruits. We are also continuously improving provisions for learners with special needs as you had in a special way. I wish to congratulate our students with special needs who have made it and thank all those who supported them. Let us continue to work towards leaving no child behind. Should you happen to have a child who is who's being kept at school at home because of disability, you know you are doing a disservice to this country. Please bring the school, these children to us. We'll take care of them and uh, get the best out of them. Every child is important, every child is useful, and that's why we want all of them to have quality education. The teachers who to manage the, such students have been trained. A number of learning institutions seemingly adapted the need 
to accommodate learners with special needs despite few challenges. A recent study by the Uganda Equal Opportunities Commission indicates that a ratio of 4 to 6 learners drop out of school due to inadequate facilities to cater for the disabled. We've also found out that accessibility is also difficult for them and they don't also have the tutors or the teachers who can communicate to them. They don't have interpreters in case someone is deaf. So you find that some of those challenges fail some of these children to go to school. I'm also saying that every university from primary, from primary to secondary to university, we should start preparing the disabled people to their access to education. That way we can enhance capacity building and also we can erode away the stigma attached to disabled people. The chairperson, Equal Opportunities Commission, Sylvia Ntambi, says a countrywide campaign to identify schools with facilities to accommodate special needs learners has started. Sylvia adds that this will expedite the process of funding the schools to ensure the beneficiaries are not left behind. We want to find out the dropout rate of children with disabilities and want to find out why. But the few places we have gone to, we found that the facilities like toilets are one of the issues why children drop out and they stay home. Makere University, Faculty of Law, is among the top institutions that have adapted a special care to the disabled by establishing a disability clinic dubbed the Disability Law and Rights Center to promote disability through legal education, research and advocacy. Daniel Mugoya, UBC News. Thanks Daniel for that report there. Now students, teachers and parents across the country are still celebrating a day after the release of UCE results where most candidates excelled. Now the results that were released in Kampala by the First Lady Janet Katam Seveni indicate that 92% of the 333,050 students who attempted the November exams passed. The celebrations were spontaneous as news of good performance reached rural areas. Students and their teachers have stormed Ginger Progressive on learning they had passed the UCE with flying colors. This is after news trickled in that 57 candidates had passed in grade 1 and very few other in grade 2. The director of this school, Hadswaib Chitezala, who was overwhelmed by the great performance this year said, it was by God's grace and hard work by teachers and students with parent support. <laughs> We thank the parents, uh, the oh yeah. 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 The chairperson, secondary schools, Bushenye, Reverend Duncan Mugumia, said, government aided and USE schools, after all, perform well. Mugumia, who doubles as the head teacher at Kasinga Center of Higher Education, says that what matters is the implementation of the curriculum. I'm very proud of, of the aggregates, and at uh, this time, I'm so excited, I can't tell how... The first students got 15 aggregates. We thank God for everything. Mostly for the scores we have. Uh, children or the candidates who had uh, grade 3 and grade 4 in senior 4 still can come back because for us we give them ample time, we give them extra time. Such schools of uh, uh, setting like Church of God, we give a priority to those learners who were weak in a certain level. In Shima district, USE schools also led with 8 and 9 aggregates in UCE. The exams were released Friday morning. The wave of celebration seems unstoppable among schools that have excelled. Shida at Nasaku, UBC News. It's no secret that ICT makes learning easy. The strides made in our field could not be possible without it. And now we can watch our favorite show. Ah, 
My radio is my best friend. UCC provides an enabling regulatory environment and policy guidance for healthy competition. We also facilitate ease of doing business in the communications sector through licensing, standardization, spectrum management, tariff regulation, rural communication development and consumer empowerment. An informed consumer is an empowered consumer. UCC supports local content and innovations. Driving the development of a robust communication sector in Uganda is Uganda Communications Commission. Hi, I'm Didier Drogba. On average, almost 250,000 people die on the road in Africa each year. As a proud African, this breaks my heart knowing that so many deaths could have been avoided. So when you're on the road, follow these safe steps and help save lives. The numbers don't lie. Seatbelts save lives. Drivers and passengers must always wear a seatbelt. Passengers who don't wear seatbelts are a danger to themselves and others. In a crash, they can be thrown around the car, causing serious injury. Ensure children are safely fastened in car seats suitable for the size and weight. And keep small children out of the front seat. So when you're on the road, follow these safe steps and help save lives. We all have a role to play in road safety. Together, let's make Africa's world safer. Welcome back. Let's talk business now. And in a bid to promote safety and health, education and talent development, SBC International, a company constructing Hoima International Airport, has donated assorted items to different groups in Hoima. The company has donated a 10,000 litre water tank, exercise books, pencils and paints to Nyamasonga Primary School. It has, a, it has also donated 191 helmets and reflector jackets to border border cyclists, sports jerseys and balls to different clubs. Now we have donated this, SBC has donated this, the problem of water in Nyamasonga Primary School. So. The SBC Operation Manager, Dotan Hamere, officiated at the handover of assorted items to different groups in Hoima. <laughs> Hamere said the donation is part of their corporate social responsibility aimed at promoting good relationship with the communities in their area of operation. He says that SBC company has renovated several health facilities, schools, constructed sanitary facilities and donated an ambulance with the aim of promoting better service delivery. In 2019, we built four stanza pit latrine for Nyamasoga Primary School to improve the sanitation of the pupils and teachers. The Hoima district chairperson, Karunji Kadiri, commended SBC for the donation and advised communities to embrace government projects. Beneficiaries, including hospitals, schools and others, said SBC has done a recommendable job even in local content in Winyoro. Dokas Kmono, UBC TV News. Thanks, Dokas. Now let's go back a little bit to Kasese, where police in Kasese district have arrested six men suspected of cultivating marijuana and marungi in Queen Elizabeth National Park. Now they were jointly arrested uh, with, uh, by UWA and uh, the UPDF in Queen Elizabeth National Park, a wildlife gazetted area. Marijuana and Mairungi farming is not yet officially gazetted, but anxious Ugandans are already gearing up for the opportunity to reap from the enterprise. Police Public Relations Officer Renzori East, Vincent Tresige says, some people in Kasese are already deep in the business of growing marijuana and Mairungi. However, six of the farmers were found sealed in Queen Elizabeth National Park, trying out their luck in the marijuana and Mairungi farming enterprise. However, their luck ran out as they were arrested in a joint operation by UWA and UPDF in Queen Elizabeth National Park, a gazetted land for wild animals. 
police published Renzori East, Vincent Resige, says over an acre of land was already covered with marijuana. He said the six are Friday Wilson, 52 years, from Saluti B, Nelson Tembo, 23 years, from Kirembe, Masereka Zalimon, 38, from Rabihungu, Chom Hendo Mugasa, 29 years, from Saluti A, Happy Moses, 30 years, of Saluti B, and Tresigwe Edison, 35 years, all residents of Kasese district. Zelefa Masika of Owa said, according to the act governing the protection of national parks, the arrested will be imprisoned for the offense committed. The suspects revealed that their mission was to cultivate and sell for income generation. Docas Kimono, UBC TV News. Elsewhere in the world, we go to the UK, where the UK has officially left the European Union after 47 years of membership and more than three years after it voted to do so in a referendum. The historic moment, which happened at 23 hours GMT, was marked by both celebrations and anti-Brexit protests. Candlelit vigils were held in Scotland, which voted to stay in the EU, while Brexiters parted in London's Parliament Square. Boris Johnson has vowed to bring the country together and, I quote, take us forward, end of quote. In a message released on social media an hour before the UK's departure, the Prime Minister said, and I quote once again, for many people, this is an astonishing moment of hope, a moment they thought would never come. He said some had worried the political wrangle would not end, but it was his job to take the country forward. Brexit parties were held in pubs and social clubs across the UK as the country counted down to its official departure. The thousands gathered in Parliament Square to celebrate Brexit, singing patriotic songs and cheering speeches from leading Brexiters, including Nigel Farage. The Brexit party leader said, and I quote, let us celebrate tonight as we have never done before, end of quote. Now, pro-EU demonstrators earlier staged a march in Whitehall to bid a fond farewell to the Union and anti-Brexit rallies and candlelit vigils were held in Scotland. Sports News Now and a Federation of Motorsports Clubs in Uganda has, during its annual general meeting, elected new office bearers to run affairs over the next four years. It was a tight contest for the most of the positions at one of the most heated elections in the Federation's history. We have this story. Accordingly, the electoral committee declares the Paul Parelia, the new president. Dipuru Paredia has won presidency for Federation of Motorsport Clubs in Uganda. This after an eight-hour annual meeting hosted at Katikati Restaurant in Kampala. We need to roll back our sponsors. We need to have accountability. Clubs must be put in order because, I mean, in this last election, we could see that you know, clubs have not been monitored properly. Uh, but now we are, I'm going to task my team to say, guys, if we are doing the cleanup, there are no fears. There's no fear. There's no fears. We, we, we have to do what we have to do. And, you know, hopefully, God willing, now is the time for us to make the changes we want in the sport. Dipu sailed through with 37 votes, beating incumbent Dusmanoki, Jufren Samba and Jaco Avamono, and promises massive improvement to better the sport. Being an ex-driver, I will always look at my fellow drivers. They'll be my first priority. Not just the guys in front, not just the 10 guys in front. I'm looking at the people behind. Nobody's there to protect the guys behind. I know what they go through to just get a shop and go to get a tire, to get fuel, to get sponsorship. We want to see that we try and get sponsorship for our federation, for our sport, to trickle down to clubs, and to trickle down to the drivers and competitors, motorcyclists, everybody. The vice presidency was also a tight affair climaxing with a shame Senka took a beating for others, while for deputy vice president in charge of motorsport, Jeff Kabagambe sailed through. Chisitu Mayanja takes deputy vice president cycling 
while deputy vice president for vintage is filled by Hussein Kato. The new general secretary is Leila Mayanja and will be assisted by Ernest Ziwa. First up for the new executive that will last four years is organizing the Mbararare, which kick starts a growing season during which drivers will contest eight events. John Burns, Sendam, reporting. Now, an emotion-filled Staples Center has hosted its first game since the death of Kobe Bryant. Now, Kobe made his name as a Los Angeles Lakers player, especially at their Staples Center home, in a career spanning 20 years during which he enabled the franchise win five NBA titles. After his death on Sunday last week, the club postponed its Tuesday fixture against the Clippers, but had to respect the Portland Trail Blazers' visit at the emotion-filled venue. Lakers continued honoring its former player with all 20,000 seats draped with a shirt emblazoned with either 8 or 24, the numbers Kobe donned during his playing time. The lead up to the game had iconic music group Boys to Men lead the national anthem with Usher singing Amazing Grace, while a cheery Lebron James paid a glowing tribute to the man who alongside eight others died in a helicopter accident. When action started, visiting Portland Trailblazers led almost through climaxing the 127-119 victory. Mamba out, but in the words of us. Let's have a look now at the weather forecast for tomorrow. Brought you by NEMA, ensuring sustainable development. This is the weather update from Uganda National Meteorological Authority. Together with UBC, I'm Agnes Nalukwago, your presenter tonight. Most parts of the country, that's the eastern, western, and those around the Lake Victoria, had rain for this morning, and according to the report, Kalenge had 31.6 millimeters, whereas Mbarara had 26.5 millimeters, and Kochido had 19.5 millimeters. This is because the rain belt is all over most parts of our country leading to the rains that we are receiving. Tomorrow morning we expect light rains in most parts of the country apart from some areas in the western and some areas in the northern sector which are expected to have sunny intervals. Then in the afternoon we expect rainfall in most parts of the country apart from a few areas in the northern sector where we expect to have sunny intervals and the temperature is expected to rise to 28 degrees centigrade in the northern sector whereas our capital Kampala we expect temperatures to rise to 25 and Kabale will have a maximum of 22 degrees centigrade. Going out to some selected cities in the world, Dubai is expected to have sunny conditions at a maximum of 24 degrees centigrade. Nairobi, Tokyo and New York, we expect them to have sunny intervals, whereas Tokyo will have a maximum of 12 and London, though London will have cloudy conditions. That's all we had for you. Have a blessed night. I'm Agnes Nalukwago. <laughs> Dubai. NEMA, ensuring sustainable development. And before we leave you, let's have a quick reminder of our top stories. In our news tonight, uh, ex Obote Minister Peter Otai laid to rest. Victoria's 2019 UC Elevers Party. Elsewhere in the world, the UK leaves the European Union. And in sports, Deepur Parelia is new FMU president. It is exactly 11 p.m. here in the studios of UBC TV. Thank you so much for having kept us company. On same language, it has been Elizabeth Nakakoni, and I am Edward Rukidi Kijanangoma. Wishing you a blessed night. See you tomorrow. <laughs>